The Yamaha shop manual specifies that you change the timing belt once every five years or a thousand hours. Stay tuned and we'll go through all the details on how you get to the timing belts, uh, replace them and put everything back together without harming your motors. Here are the tools I use to replace the timing belt today. Um, this one's optional, torque gun. Uh, obviously you could just use a breaker bar and traditional uh, ratchets and sockets. This makes life easier. Um, I also use the impact driver for some of the smaller hardware with a driver bit on. Again, optional. You could obviously do that stuff with a uh, ratchet and socket. This is a service manual for my particular motor. Uh, this covers all the 4.2 liter uh, V6 engines. Yamaha sells a tool for holding the flywheel uh, while you tighten it or, or loosen it. So you could buy the, tool, the real tool or just make one yourself. This is a magnet for when you drop uh, bolts that you can't reach. Uh, the parts that you remove, I highly recommend you bag and tag them. Get little plastic sandwich baggies, Sharpie. Uh, also take a lot of photos with your cell phone. Um, there's a lot, a lot of connections that have to come off. And if you're unsure of how they're going back together, you're going to wish you had a photograph. These three tools, uh, needle nose pliers, this is actually a cotter pin removal tool, and this is a really tiny screwdriver. Uh, these three tools are kind of what I use to get all the clips off, the wiring clips, uh, and, and get those separated. So uh, they all work in, in different situations, uh, but those three are what I like to use. Ratchet and, ex and an extension for an eight millimeter, a 10 millimeter, and a 12 millimeter socket. And that's for all the various uh, little covers that have to come off. You'll need a 14 millimeter socket to remove the flywheel bolts. This is a 10 millimeter Allen key, and you'll need that for loosening the tension pulley. Also need another Allen key to hold the tension tensioner once you have the tension removed, and I'll show that in the video. Feeler gauge. Feeler gauge is for positioning the timing belt guards, the appropriate distance away from the belt when you're done. Big wrenches. I have a, uh, this is a 3 8 inch breaker bar. This is a half inch breaker bar. This is a 3 8 inch torque wrench. You'll need those at various times. The belt kit, uh, Yamaha belt kit. It's the 6CBW462400. Comes with new flywheel bolts. You are not to reuse your old flywheel bolts. There's a two step torque process for these, and the second step is basically stretching the bolt, and so you don't want to reuse it. Those bolts are put on, are lubricated with a little engine oil on the threads, not with Loctite. And putting these on the table. They obviously have nothing to do with the timing belt, but when you see everything that you need to take off in order to get to the timing belt, you'll realize that the thermostat covers are super easy to get at. So if you have these on hand, you might as well throw them in. First, you're gonna remove the engine cowl and put it in a safe place. And then we're gonna remove the internal covers. This top one comes off with a 12 millimeter socket and just tug up and pull it out of the grommets. I like to put this bolt right back into the bracket so I don't lose it. Rear cover just pulls straight up over the grommets. So the first thing we have to do is clear the way so that we could get to the timing belt, which is basically under this wiring harness and this plastic shroud here, is to basically disconnect it from the port side and bring it over to the starboard side and just tuck it out of the way. Disconnect. Both fuel, line, both fuel rails from the joint pipe connector uh, will move the fuel line that way. And then the harness, which is under here, is going to get disconnected from the port side of the motor and basically be brought over to the starboard. Two bolts hold the silencer to the throttle body and another four hold the timing belt shroud to the engine. You'll need a 12 millimeter socket an extension, and the magnet. And don't forget to bag and tag your hardware.
just wiggle the air temperature sensor out of the grommet and then remove the breather hose and the silencer bracket will come right off. Make sure you stick a clean towel into the throttle body so you don't drop any hardware or tools into the motor. The fuel line and much of the engine harness are held on by clamps like this one. A uh, little trick to opening these, there's two tabs that are going in opposite directions. If you lift both of those out, they'll separate from the teeth and you could open up the clamp. To remove the fuel lines from both sides of the motor, you need to rotate this red keeper clip around and you'll see a separation there. You want to expand it carefully, you don't want to break this, and get the bosses to disengage from the clamp. Uh, and then you could pull the hose straight up. There will be some fuel on the line, so you may want to have a rag handy so you don't spill all over the place. Uh, once you have both hoses disconnected, you want to drape the, both hoses over the port side of the motor uh, and get them out of the way. There's several sensors attached to a bracket that attaches to the throttle body. I found it easier just to take a 12 millimeter socket and remove that bracket as a single assembly with all the wires attached. You're going to find a lot of these wire tie keepers all over the engine harness. I'm going to show you this one uh, near the coil pack just because it's more visible. But as this video continues on, you'll see me following the wire harness around and using the needle nose pliers to detach these clips. As you work your way around the motor, you're going to see where you still have connectors attached. Some of them may need a little screwdriver to press in a tab. The vast majority of them, you just have to pinch with your, fit, with your thumb and separate them. The Yamaha engineers were nice enough to make sure that the plugs were all different so you don't really have any issue with mis mix matching any of the sensors. But feel free to take photographs or even mark these if you feel you need to. The port side fuel injectors need to be disconnected. You should be able to pinch these off and just pull them. I was having a hard time so I used a pair of needle nose to squeeze the plug and then I was able to wiggle it off with my fingers. Here I'm removing the wire ties from the injector harness and there's also a ground screw that you'll need a, a 10 millimeter socket to remove. There's a lot to remove at the back of the motor, the breather hose, the ECM, the uh, coil pack connectors, and there's at least a half a dozen wire clamps and clips that need to be disconnected. Remove the connectors from the coil packs and all the wire clips holding any parts of the harness uh, on the back of the motor. So a couple relays attached to this bracket, it's just easier to take the whole bracket off as one assembly. I believe this is a 10 millimeter socket. Take your time, be patient. You don't want to tug on the wire harness too hard. Uh, you will very likely still have a couple sensors or wire ties or something connected. After you slide out the shroud, uh, set that aside, and you may or may not have enough slack yet to move the wire harness completely over to the starboard side. I still had a couple uh, sensors connected in between the cylinder banks uh, that I had to disconnect before I could get enough slack. Everything's finally disconnected and I have enough slack in this harness and now I can tuck it carefully over the starboard side of the engine and get it out of the way to start removing the timing belt. You need to find top dead center and this is critically important. This is an interference style motor, meaning if the valve train and the pistons are out of time you will have catastrophic engine failure. I'm rotating the motor here with a breaker bar and a 14 millimeter socket and there's a mark on the crankshaft that has to align with a corresponding mark on the block itself. And then I have to see if the camshaft gears have their marks lined up. Uh, it's much easier to see the camshaft gears. You can see the, 
the crankshaft mark is actually underneath that flywheel so it's a little harder to see um, in the video. Uh, here you can see the pulleys, uh, the marks lining up on the pulleys. So I know my crankshaft is in the right place, I know my camshafts are in the right place. Uh, this is where I want to be for top dead center. Here I'm using my homemade bracket to hold the flywheel as I remove the 14 millimeter flywheel bolts. The timing belt kit from Yamaha comes with new flywheel bolts, so we'll discard these old ones. You will not need a flywheel puller on the 4.2 liter Yamaha. The only thing holding on the flywheel at this point is the magnetic force of the stator. Use an 8 millimeter socket to remove the 6 stator bolts. Use a 12 millimeter socket to remove the stator retention clip and tuck the stator safely off to the side. Use a 12 millimeter socket to remove the stator bracket as well as the timing belt guard on the crankshaft. Use a 12 millimeter socket to remove both timing belt guards off the rear of the motor. To release the tension on the belt, you'll need a 10 millimeter Allen wrench. Insert the Allen wrench here and apply less than 11 pounds of force in a clockwise direction. Make sure you don't use too much force or you'll damage the tensioner wheel. To hold the tensioner open, insert a pin or another Allen key into this hole. With the tension release, you could remove the old timing belt. Now we finally get to put the belt on. First thing, locate the words on the belt and make sure they are facing upright. Second, you'll find that there are five marks on the belt. There are two sets of paired marks which are fairly close together. Those go on the back of the motor on the cam pulleys. The mark that's by itself will go on the crankshaft. This next part would be much easier if you had a helper, but is absolutely doable by just one person. Lay the belt over the engine with the pairs of marks facing the rear of the engine where the camshafts are. Make sure the words of the belt are facing up. Line up your first pair of marks with the port side cam pulleys. Right on our mark here. Right on our mark here. While holding the belt on the first two cam pulleys, go around the port side idler pulley and then around the crankshaft. Here are the corresponding marks on the crankshaft pulley. Next, route the belt around the tensioner pulley and back around the starboard side cam pulleys. Here are how the marks line up on the starboard side cam pulleys. You may notice that inboard pulley, I haven't pushed the belt all the way down yet. And that's to help get it around the final idler pulley. Leaving the belt high on that last cam pulley allows you the slack to slide it over the final idler pulley. Go around to all the pulleys and all the alignment marks and do one last check and make sure everything lines up. Once you're happy with the position of the belt, you could re-engage the tension pulley. Here I've temporarily installed the flywheel so that I could rotate the motor with a breaker bar. This is to ensure that I don't have any timing problems. Reinstall the timing belt guide on the crankshaft and adjust to 0.5 to 1.5 millimeters of clearance. Install both rear timing belt guards with the same clearances as the crank version, 0.5 to 1.5 millimeters. Reinstall the stator bracket next. Reinstall the stator and the retention clip for the stator harness. Look how easy it is to get to the thermostat housings. I'll put a link in the top corner of the screen if you want to see how to do that job. Line up the flywheel with the locator pin on the crankshaft to install. Use motor oil to lubricate the new flywheel bolts that came in the timing belt kit. Torquing the new flywheel bolts is a two-step process. Step one, Torque all the bolts in a star pattern to 29.5 pounds. I used a Sharpie in step one to indicate which bolts I had torqued uh, and to also help in step two, which is retorquing each bolt an additional 90 degrees. Reposition and reinstall the timing belt shroud. 
Very carefully bring the wiring harness back over the shroud and start to position it in its original clips. Reconnect both fuel lines by inserting the blue clip into the hose end and pressing down over the fuel rail. Replace the bracket on the throttle body assembly and then the silencer. Obviously you have another dozen or so connections to make around the motor. Double check everything, make sure your wire ties are connected, all your clamps. Once you're done, you're ready to hook up the water and give it a test. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks and tight lines.